coming. A couple quick comments about uh, last week's win. Um, I'm very pleased, obviously, we're representing the Big Ten in the championship game. Uh, great tribute to our players to do that, but that's all put aside for the rivalry week and um, have a lot of work to do. So last week's champions on offense were Taylor Deckers playing a very high level, Pat Elfline in the offensive line, those two did. Wide receiver, you had three of them, Evan Spencer, Devin Smith, and Corey Smith. Uh, Corey Smith also started on four special teams for the first time in his career. Player of the game was Ezekiel Elliott, and uh, obviously Jalen Marshall had a heck of a day. Those were the uh, players of the game. On uh, defense, champions were Von Bell, Josh Perry, Joey Bosa, Adolphus Washington, and Raekwon McMillan. And Michael Bennett's last two weeks, and, and uh, he's been outstanding, so he was the defensive player of the game, Mike Bennett. Special teams player of the week uh, was also Jalen Marshall. Had 19 production points, changed the game with that punt return. So uh, we, we put that one to bed rather quickly, uh, as we do uh, this rivalry game, and that was um, all, all focus and attention went to that, uh, to this game, um, obviously. So I'll answer any questions for you. Front row left, Rusty. Um, Urban, you kind of got steeped in this rivalry. You knew about it, obviously, going up in Ohio, but when you were here in 86, 87 from Earl, big on staff. What did you learn that during that period that really impressed you on the fact of how much different this rivalry game is, or a rivalry game is, from everything else on the schedule? Well, I, you know, I've heard people say that it's just another game. You know, when I hear rivalry games, this, that's, uh, we don't take that approach at all. Uh, and I learned that here at Ohio State, and I took that really with me on our journey, and that was at Bowling Green against uh, Toledo. Was and we, we, that was, uh, I, I think it's great for, you know, when you, when you ask a player to come play for your school or, or even a coach, you know, I have Chris Ash and I have uh, uh, Larry Johnson. I don't, this is not another game. This is, you know, you go back and go to have a little chat with Earl Bruce for six or seven minutes and this game's going to come up. And uh, that's the way I was, you know, that's just the way that it is here and that's the way it should be. So um, we just make a huge deal out of rivalry games. I think our players, I want them to take ownership in a program, part of ownership in a program. This is not another game. This is the game. And uh, so it is different around here. There, there's, I want to I want to have some fun with it, but I also want the players to, when you say have fun, I'm not sure how to have fun. You know, it's how to have fun is to sing the fight song in, uh, in the locker room after a win against your rival. That's how you have fun. Everything leads up to that fun. And so I know I'm kind of going on and on, but it's a, it's, a, it's a huge deal here. And it's something that was, uh, it's always been a huge, I, as long as I can remember, this game is the game. And, you know, the comment might be a little bit embellished about you can lose them all, just win this one. I'm not sure I buy that one. Uh, but this is a this is and our players know it and and we the other thing we do we like to educate our players on a rivalry and the gold pants and so every day we're going to have a as we have in the past every day a nugget about the rivalry and and just educate our players obviously in the preseason camp we always do something about this game and I'll pick a couple days throughout the year in February and March and April where we'll just it'll be this day and and uh, throughout the whole, and the, the, the good thing is there's some great documentary documentaries out there about the HBO special and and then our video guys, Outstanding Dave, always puts together some great stuff about the rivalry. And one more thing, Michigan hasn't had the kind of year that they would have hoped. There's a lot of questions circulating up there. What do you anticipate you'll get from Their best guys? game like they did, like, there are great players there. And when the situation is where there's uh, coach in a hot seat, do you anticipate that the players play differently? Do they approach it in any different way to play for the guy who uh, might have brought well, No, you know, I, I guess I, I haven't thought about it, but I, I coached for a man who lost his job on a Monday. Not that that has any, uh, anything to do with this, but no, I, I, we're anticipating. I met with the defensive staff this morning, and we'll get the best, uh, you know, uh, their personnel will play their very best against us. And uh, that happened. La that was a, as obvious as you can uh, be last year. Front row left, Doug. Urban, we know you understand this rivalry. How much in your other coaching stops, especially maybe at Utah or at Florida, did you take this rivalry 
with you there in terms because we know you're so successful in rivalry games, but I heard Dan Wallace <coughs> the other day talking about the old Miss game. He called it the team up north. You know, did you, have you sprinkled the Ohio State Michigan rivalry around? Well, I learned it here, and so you go to uh, Bowling Green, and it's certainly we didn't invent that rivalry. That that's always been a nasty. You know, the the teams are only twenty some miles apart. You know, Bowling Green, Toledo, and then we go to. Uh, Utah, and once again, we didn't invite that, in, invent the rivalry. We maybe put a lot of emphasis on it, called in the team down south, and, and uh, had some success out there with it. And then we go to Florida. It's interesting that Florida, you have three of them. You have Tennessee early in the year. You have, uh, you know, Georgia, and then you have the, the team out west. You know, uh, so, you know, and, and some people say, you know, you. you know, that's, we, we're gonna have fun with. I told you, there's no fun in a rivalry unless you're singing the fight song after the game. That's the fun uh, that you have in it. So to answer your question, um, yeah, I think that is kind of neat. Uh, Dan and I talk about that, and I think that's great. And this, through your time here, there's been a lot of talk with leadership and that kind of thing. Now that you're here with this senior class, <coughs> what have you thought how this senior group, especially the captains and leaders on this team? have filled their roles through your time here, especially Great this question. Uh, blown away with our first year. I, I didn't see that coming. Uh, maybe the best group of leaders I've ever been around, the 2012 team, when everything was ripped away from them and they still did what they did. That was, I mean, that's why there's stuff around this facility still about honoring those players. And when they come back here, they're treated like royalty, like they should, because they did. They, they made a decision. They didn't have to do that. You know, those last years, I think, was pretty good. You know, when Christian Bryant went down, that was a that was a sucker punch that we needed him in certain areas on our defense, and we didn't have him anymore. And that's how valuable a player he was. And this year is still to be determined. You know, right now I'd grade Mike Bennett. A, you know, he's okay. And then that, for some reason, the last month he's been outstanding. You know, Jeff Hireman's good, but uh, th th this 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 book's not written yet. Um, so I, I'm I'm pleased with it, but uh, these next couple are gonna. That's going to be their legacy. Front row, Todd. Urban. Our legacy, I should say. Coaches want to want their teams to start peaking at this time of year, start playing their best football. You guys were, probably did that uh, in East Lansing and Minnesota, and then I don't know if you would say that you did that last week. How do you recapture sort of that uh, playing on that uptick that you guys had? I agree with that. Uh, there's a multitude of reasons, but uh, I agree with that 100 percent that um, if JT hits a couple of those passes, we don't turn it, you know, could have, would have, should have. You know, there were some excellent performances in that game. You still had 530 or 40 yards offense, and you, you missed a bunch of receivers wide open. You had uh, turn, three turnovers that kind of put us in a bad deal, and then you had two run fit miss issues on defense. So, but the facts are facts. You know, just uh, it's easier when you have. You know our feeling about receivers on to play 30, 40 plays a game, not 60. And then he's also a special teams guy, so I'm just being very cautious of that. Evan Spencer is going to have to help us at H. Um, the JC uh, uh, Corey Smith has helped us as well. And that's some, and then you notice we're a little bit more 12 than we've been, and that's a one back, two tight ends with uh, uh, Nick Vanetto, and he's playing really well. So he's a guy that we keep trying to force ourselves to get him in the game. So the H-back has evolved the way we want it. It's just now that you just wish you had the other guy still. Front row, Bill. Urban, I uh, <clears throat> can't say I know your musical taste that well, but I guess LL Cool J is on nonstop. LL Cool J. The, uh, this is war. Or oh, it's time, time for war. It's time for war. I just know yeah. the song's name. <laughs> <laughs> He's really good at it. I know. It's a good song. Could you give background on how that came to be played? I have no idea. I think uh, our video guy put it in a video. and. I don't think it was my, I don't know. It's not on my iPod or iPad or something. <laughs> but just, I mean, <clears throat> how different is everything this week? Well, I, I hear the players' comments, and, and I think it is a lot different. You know, if it's not, then we're not doing a good job. Well, Coach Mick does a great job. Dave, you know, I have a bunch of people in this facility that it is different. There will be things every day added to the facility to make them. You walk in a weight room, it's completely different, everything. And uh, it's always been that way, you know. That's that's. I remember that 1986, my first year here, and driving into work and seeing those. She there were sheets hanging outside the dorm. Uh, Muck Fishigan. You want to say? Should I say that right? Muck, Muck Fishigan. <laughs> and I thought that is so. You know, that was really neat. And then they flipped the M and the F on Friday when I drove. It didn't stay up very long. <laughs> but it did. 
I saw it. Obviously, Michigan has struggled this year. Is it, does it matter at all that they are having their issues? No, because you watch videotape and the uh, talent's not, you know, they're going to they're gonna give us everything they got, and they got what they got is a lot. So, no, there's, and, and these players, this is motivation won't be an issue. Expectation of facing a very talented team. We're facing a top 10 defense in the country. And I just, you know, for the two days now we've been pounding watching it, they're really good. Really good, so no, there's no issue. Very good, athletic and talented on special teams, too. All right, Austin. <coughs> and, uh, last year wasn't the first time there were punches thrown in this game. I, yeah. That probably won't be the last. But I had to talk with our team about that, and that's that, absolutely no case for that. Intensity, uh, absolutely uh, uh, certain mentality when you take this field, but that's not acceptable. The fact that you have an additional game, um, and they have maybe nothing to lose, is that something that you could factor in? You have to be careful with what you do because your season doesn't end on Saturday. That's a good question, and I'll probably will discuss that. I did uh, that. That didn't come up. Just that uh, I'll be, you know, we're, we're not. That's not the way we play the game. And I think a lot of lessons were learned. We went without uh, uh, one of our key linemen in the championship game the following week, and we played a game without two or three good players. So that's not the. And you know, that was a very strong conversation yesterday in the team meeting. Front row, Kim. Yeah, two things. Number one, uh, Jalen Marshall, the emergence at the H at the hybrid back. Did that offense at times Saturday look sort of like what you envisioned with a hybrid back in it? You understand what I'm yep. saying? Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not eating. This whole year has Tim. Florida, this this whole year has Tim. It, it maybe it's starting to, yeah. But we we didn't have that luxury the first two years. You know, Philly Brown was close, but he wasn't quite. And if you, I just got done watching the team the game last year against them, and he was active in the run game, Philly, but not like these guys are. These guys are kind of built the way we want them, and and uh, so to answer your question, yes. The other thing, like, like also was just asking, though, how tough of a predicament is it to be playing a game for a championship next week, but you've got this one, this is the rivalry that – you understand what I mean? What, what kind of pickle does that put you all in from a – It's uh, real. It's real. We, 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 when I was at Florida, we had to deal with that the FSU game each, each – I mean, that's, that's real. Uh, but it's also embrace it, take advantage of it, love every moment of it. But there's only one way to enjoy every moment, and that's seeing the fights on in the locker room after the game. So that is, that's real what you just said. But it, it, there's no conversation about, hey, let's hold this back, let's hold it, you know, go win this game. All right, Clay. Back at Ashtabula, what were your childhood memories of this game? And as you went through high school, did you think you were going to get a look from this place? Of course I did. My mom told me I was a great player. <laughs> Things didn't work out. Kept waiting for that letter, never happened. Nobody called you? Nope, nope. But that's another story I get now. Um, I do remember one time when I was real young that I couldn't understand it, but my, my mother grabbed me and said, it's, we got to go run an errand or something. I looked like she was out of her mind. And we went to some outdoor area. It was an outdoor like mall, and they're playing the, the game over the loudspeakers. And I, I just, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Is I mean, just listening to the game. It was Pete Johnson, Archie Griffin, and the boys. And, and so that's the, obviously, I, I remember every game. I remember even I told some of the story on Sunday. Mike Turgovac was a great friend, is a great friend of mine. And uh, we were both coaching at Colorado State together. And we went and played Hawaii. And we both got up at like 5 a.m. to watch. And we always had a little wager on it. And obviously, he was a great player at the team up north. And, I was pulling for the Buckeyes, so. And last question, Rob, second row middle. Urban, you, you, you've got a song playing 24-7. You're doing other little motivational thing. Is there a balance? Is there any concern of overdoing it, a tipping point on getting the guys too hyped up or too pumped up? And have you learned through the years? I don't think that hypes them up. I think it's just uh, a remembrance of what we're doing to have a good practice. You know, I think we try to compartmentalize every. We're not trying to go play the game tomorrow. We're trying to have a good Tuesday practice, uh, trying to have a good Monday where guys come in. It's their off day, but they come in and get treatments, take care of themselves. And I just constant reminders of what the game is. I think the older players know and appreciate it. I think the young players are getting a little dose of it now. It is a different week. That's all it is. We're not trying to motivate them to play the game on a Tuesday. It's just, the, you know, and, I, and we'll talk to them about it. I, I don't want to devalue your question, but we'll, we'll, we'll have conversation. You know, let's, let's take care of the, the moment, and the moment is to somehow win a Tuesday and then get to Wednesday. You followed this from afar, this rivalry. How tough is the 90s for you? I mean, they were 
Oh, it's, I mean, it's not from, as a, as a fan and as a, someone who's followed the Buckeyes, it was, you just would always pull for them because I knew they had great players and that was two, two good teams going at it all, all the time, though. Coach, can I ask a quick question about the middle linebacker? You don't see a lot of teams rotate at middle linebacker. You obviously feel that's the best approach for you guys. Why, why is that a best, the best approach for you guys? Two good players, one great leader that's really improved his play, Curtis Grant. And then another guy that's uh, obviously, you know, he played like third. You're right. They, I think it was 34 and 30, the amount of plays that each one of them played. And, and 